Hey there, guys. Uh, I am doing an early live stream today because uh, I have to go out of town this afternoon. But also, I really wanted to cover this new new advance in Dorico, or rather Cubase uh, 14, which is to import um, Dorico projects directly. So the goal of this video is to share some of my experiences, help uh, anybody who's who's struggling with this to understand a few things that I've learned along the way, hopefully illuminate, you know, path around any any barriers that people might run into, and also express, uh, you know, my, my perspective on this. So um, this is going to be helpful if you are somebody who uses both Dorico and Cubase. I think many people are attracted to both Cubase and Dorico because of the implied relationship between them. Up until now, the relationship between them has been pretty tenuous and hasn't really offered us a great workflow, but I know many, many composers are uh, really looking forward to the day that um, this integration of being able to work in a DAW environment and being able to work in the notation environment you know, is, is flawless. That's what we're all hoping for. This is a massive step forward, I will say that. Um, I, in a previous life, was a computer programmer, so I have a lot of empathy for, um, for the folks at Steinberg. I think they've done an amazing thing here, but this is a seed of, of a long-term project, and um, I don't have exclusive insights into that beyond uh, what I know having had a career as a computer programmer. You know, it might take a team of three programmers a, a week to change a rollover image on a button or something like that. Computer programming is just so error prone. And when you're trying to take something as complicated as music notation, even though underneath all the, all the notation is MIDI, it is complicated to extract that and get that into Cubase, you know, two, two different sort of project formats to integrate well. So, um, I think they've done a great job of getting the ball rolling. With Cubase 14, they implemented a score editor that I think was much improved, um, especially and obviously designed around Darko users, but that makes sense. And I know that there were some people who were invested in and liked the old score editor. I'm not one of them, uh, but I respect that you know people who put a lot of time into learning a tool are frustrated when that tool changes. Nonetheless, here we are, we're with Cubase 14, we're with Dorico 5, and we finally have this amazing import. So what was my experience like? My experience, the first time I thought, oh great, I've got this big honkin' orchestral arrangement that I would just love to get into Cubase like that, and I imported it, and nothing. Nothing's there. So I thought, well, that's a little disappointing. Uh, so I went back and I created just a straight up piano uh, from the solo piano template that's built into Dorico. Played in some chords, a little melody, imported that, perfect. Uh, there it was, my piano MIDI. Now what I learned from that first example uh, was that it's just importing the MIDI. It's not importing any of the expression maps. It's not importing any of the instruments or presets. Um, it's importing the note positioning, you know, the notation. It does seem to do a good job of the dynamics. And um, I'm going to walk you through how I, uh, an example of something that I actually got working and, sh and share with you kind of how I got there. Okay, so let's take a look at... I've got a, so this was me uh, pulling up a, um, I keep going to the wrong thing because I'm not paying attention. Huh, it's not letting me do, let me get rid of this. Okay, and go back to Cubase. I'm looking for, I guess I need to just click that. I don't know why. Uh, it, it has something to do with the way and this is this is sort of frustrating, but I'm just going to get rid of these projects. I don't know why it's even asking me to do this, but I think what happened here is Cubase is collapsing under the weight of something that I was doing earlier. There's my little piano input that I that I had. So let's load up Cubase again, 
And I'll say that when I went, the solution that I ultimately found while this is loading up is that I needed to create a new project in Dorico. Uh, and then I had to import the flow from my old orchestral piece. And I had to actually copy that from the imported flow into the sort of basic flow that the project contains. And then it imported perfectly. So there were some extra steps. Um, let's see if this loads up. Um, yes, there it is. So this was the import. This is what I imported from this Darko project. Let me, let me share my desktop here. So you can see there's a heck of a lot of MIDI here. Um, it really did a great job. This was the original score here in the Darko format. So pretty extensive. Um, it seemed that when I imported this flow, that the Cubase import does not give you the option to choose which flow you're going to import. Um, it just seems to import whatever sort of, I'll, I'll, I'll say, the native flow. So whatever that initial flow is that's created in the project seems to somehow register as the flow that should be imported. I dragged the flows around, like I moved my imported flow to the beginning in the setup mode, uh, you know, like this where... Uh, you know, you can go down here and you can drag this flow over or drag this one over here. I tried reordering them. That didn't seem to make any difference. But going ahead and copying and pasting where I basically went, selected all these, selected all the bars in the piece. If you check this little box, it selects everything in that range. I hit copy. I came over to the sort of native flow and I hit paste. And uh, that was when it worked. That was the step that I had to take in order to get to this. Now, if I open this up in the score editor, I get a very nice looking score. Looks a lot like Dorico. Everything's in there. Now, this is a much, uh, it's a different display, right? Because the Cubase score editor does not have the same galley view uh, presentation. Um, but it got everything in there, you know. It got in. You can see there are dynamics, and there's uh, you have the little staccatos and accents and stuff. So it got a lot of it, and it's uh, it's great. Now let's talk about you know some of the things that I I wish that it had. <laughs> I wish that it would import um, the instruments or the expression maps. It's important to realize that although you get the cosmetic. Uh, appearance of dynamics, that that's not written into the dynamics lanes that are in the key editor of Cubase. So Cubase doesn't really interpret those dynamics. Um, so there's, uh, there's, this is a work in progress. If you, uh, let's talk about some case studies where I think as it is, it's going to suit you really well. I think if you have a massive score, even something like this, I mean, this is not massive, it's only 56 bars, but, you know, it's a whole orchestra. It would be a real pain in the butt to, to get this in and out, um, certainly by playing. But it's easier, it's, it's, it's more robust way to just get that MIDI from, Cuba, from Dorico into Cubase. However, it's not really that helpful if you're trying to produce the sounds because you now have to reconnect up all the instruments. I, that, that's, that's coming, I'm sure. Um, and if not, you know, a sort of one-to-one -one perfect linking up of everything, then at least tools built into Cubase that, that support us in doing that, or maybe exporting some sort of, you know, Darko playback template model that can be imported into, into Cubase or something like that, that I can imagine down the road. Anyway, it's a, it's a work in progress, right? We need to give the folks at Steinberg more time. What they've done here is they have literally just gotten the notation to export as MIDI and import reliably in a, in a sort of one-click operation. And if you're just trying to get that data over to Cubase, then I think this is perfect for you. It's already there. If, like me, you're a composer, 
who puts just as much time into the composition and notation as you do into the production, getting the levels right, getting the mix right, then there's still going to be, you're, you're still got to wait until this works um, seamlessly for you. Now, that being said, I want to offer some workarounds for those kinds of folks that are like me and they're composers and they're, they're looking at this. Um, if you use the Project Logical Editor um, in Cubase, then you could use that very reliably to connect up these instruments. Um, I have a huge collection now of Project Logical Editor presets. I have one for each instrument. And I have a template that loads up all my Vienna Ensemble Pro instances. And so when I create a new template, I have all my Vienna Ensemble instances. I run uh, a macro, and the macro contains all of the PLE or Project Logical Editor presets, one for the flute, one for the piccolo, one for the oboe, so on and so forth. It looks and it sees, is the track named Violin 1? If it is, connect it. In, uh, output to this instrument and I'm done. Now it definitely took some time to set up however now it's uh, as you've seen in some of my other demo videos it's like that. So I think if you are like me and you want to do this um, where you, you're composing and then you want to bring it into Cubase in order to do the production side mixing and bussing and effects and automation and stuff like that then you can use the Project Logical Editor presets to bridge this gap until some later date when Steinberg uh, have had time to you know, s solve that problem of getting the instruments and expression maps from uh, Dorico into Cubase as part of this. Expression maps are also a serious limitation here because, um, for example, I have Darko set up in my expression map to automatically select a spiccato articulation on my strings when the note is very short, which is you can, you can choose lengths of notes in Darko expression maps and assign them based on that to specific uh, key switches or channel switches. So here I have the notation of, of uh, 30 second notes or, but I'm not getting spiccato, and I have to go back in and do that or have my, uh, my expression maps do that. So there's definitely some things that need to be developed more. I have total confidence that Steinberg's going to do it. The fact that they built the Darko-like interface to replace the score editor in Cubase 14 was a huge move forward and a huge indicator of their commitment to trying to bridge the gap between these two incredible pieces of software. This uh, being the first significant update to Cubase 14, this is, you know, obviously there are others, there are other aspects of the update for sure, but, but this one's huge. So again, it, it reinforces the sense that uh, the folks at Steinberg are, are definitely on this. I'm sure they're getting an earful from everybody who's, you know, it's, it's not working like clockwork. I want to be one of the voices that say, this is a, an outstanding job that they've done. Um, this is a workaround for folks like me who need to get into Cubase and have all the instruments hooked up with expression maps and everything. Use the project logical editor. It's a pain to set up, but once it's set up, it's very reliable. It works really well, and I'm just going to wait until they, they dial it in, uh, in better, okay? So anyway, if you have questions about this, comments, please let me know how you're using the score editor, how, you're, how you think this import should work, how, what kind of features you'd like to see in it, um, what your experiences are with it. I'm very interested to kind of hear how, how people are interacting with it already. And I'm going to be using it a lot more and hopefully presenting more solutions and more workarounds. I really appreciate everybody's support on my channel. I... Uh, I will be gone for the weekend. I'll be back next week. And um, I bumped today's live stream till next Friday. Uh, but I'll be back on Monday and Wednesday next week as well. Have a great weekend, everybody. And I will see you again later.